So we're back day two of Eternal Con. This is uh, Sean B with Pronto Chat. And my guest right now is Greg Puck, writer of Action Comics, Batman Superman, and uh, lots of other stuff. Yeah, lots of other stuff. You're also the writer of uh, you were part of Superman Doom. Yes. You did Magneto Testament mm -hmm. and Planet Hulk and World War Hulk, which were phenomenal. Thank you. Um, so my first question is, how did you break into the industry? Um, I came up through film. I went to NYU for film school, and uh, which was fantastic, and I loved it. And I thought I was going to make a career making films, and I made a uh, feature film called Robot Stories, independent feature film, scrappy little independent little budget feature film. And uh, I was taking it around the country, and um, my agent got me a meeting with Marvel um, and uh, the comics folks. And I was thrilled and went in and talked to them, and they read the screenplay to Robot Stories, which is a terrible writing sample if I wanted to get more feature work, because it's an anthology picture. And nobody makes anthology pictures, you know, it's four separate stories. But weirdly enough, that turned out to be a great writing sample, I guess, for comics because it's four separate stories. Each one was, you know, 20, 25 pages long. Um, and uh, it was about uh, uh, the stories were about basically love, death and robots, love, death and robots. And uh, so there were these sci fi stories with heart, which is kind of what Marvel does, uh, you know, like. And, and so uh, um, yeah, they liked the folks at Marvel liked it. And I did a bunch of meetings and eventually started developing stuff. And about a year later, my first book came out, which was Warlock Number no. 1, uh, drawn by Charlie Adlard uh, back in late 2004. I think it was November 2004. So how did Planet Hulk come about? Was right. it something that they pitched you, something you pitched them, a uh, meeting in between? Mm -hmm. So I'd done a few miniseries for Marvel, and um, I was hungry to get on to uh, ongoing. And I was actually very hungry to work on the Hulk. I just had, you know, the Hulk had always been my favorite character. Uh, and I was dropping heavy hints every time I talked to anybody about how awesome the Hulk was. And uh, at a certain point, um, they pulled me in for a meeting and Joe Casada said, Hulk, alien planet, battle axes, uh, gladiator. And I was like, yes, please sign me up. So they had had, internally, they'd had this idea of shooting Hulk to an alien planet and, and uh, having him be a gladiator. And that's basically what they gave me, you know, and uh, they let me, I mean, the idea was that the heroes of Earth had decided the Hulk was too dangerous, so they trick him into a spaceship and shoot him into space. And um, and they left it to me to kind of build this world he'd go to and figure out what the real emotional story was. And, uh, and it was tremendous. I uh, was working with Mark Panachia, who is the, um, uh, with my editor on so many books over at Marvel. Um, and uh, he... It was just a great relationship working with him, and uh, we get together and talk through these stories and cackle. And, uh, it was a blast. So it was I mean, that was the most fun I'd had in comics up to that point. Nice, nice. How how influential was the film Gladiator to that book? Well, you know, it's funny because I didn't really think about the movie Gladiator. I I did go back and watch a bunch of old Gladiator movies like Spartacus and all that kind of stuff, and I actually read a lot of books about. Um, about the gladiators, you know what I mean? About the actual Roman gladiators. And, uh, and I read books about, um, I actually read books uh, of, uh, about Genghis Khan and other sort of, you know, leaders of, uh, uh, of, of, you know, of armies during that time and, and revolutionary movements. Uh, uh, so, I mean, all of these, all of this stuff draws from the same, uh, from the same source material back in the day. So, uh, so, I, I mean, I certainly, I guess there are similarities, but, um, but yeah, I, I actually didn't go back and watch the actual, glad, you know, movie Gladiator before I started writing. Nice. Um, so now jumping to DC. Now, I just last night read the uh, Batman Superman Truth book. Oh, yeah. Um, how, how much influence and input did you have in that? Or was it just kind of like, oh, Superman's going to be outed and not have powers and Batman's going to be Commissioner Gordon Cow? Right. Well, the uh, the Batman parts of that uh, came to us from the Bat Office. I mean, that was a, that's that's a awesome Scott Snyder twist. And uh, when we heard about that, it was like, yeah, this is going to be pretty sweet. Um, on the Superman side, we had been uh, all the different Superman writers and editors had been getting into rooms and talking on the phone and trading emails. We've been planning, you know, this for months. So it was something that came organically through. The, the writers and editors all talking together. Um, 
So it was not, you know, editorial mandate. The only editorial mandate we had was to, you know, to, to try something big, do something big, you know, shake it up and have fun. You know what I mean? Come up with a great Superman story. Um, and uh, so this is what we came to after bouncing around a lot. Uh, the uh, uh, And... Um, <clears throat> And then when we realized, you know, so this is what we had planned for Superman, and then we found out what Scott had planned in the Batman world, it was pretty awesome because it was like there's some kind of certain similar sort of things going on with big changes. Um, and uh, uh, and it, it, it made for some fun contracts. You know I mean? Like, I'm, I'm getting the chance to really dig into that with Batman and Superman. Uh, so it's, it's neat when you have these two major iconic characters at DC both undergoing massive changes in status quo. Now, you mentioned you're writing action comics right mm -hmm. now how does it feel writing really the first superhero comic because it's cause that was it oh yeah yeah no it was uh you know there's a, been a few times in my career when i've literally jumped up and down when i heard i got a gig and uh when i got action comics that was one of them you know i mean it was a tremendous thing i mean i came on board at dc uh the first book i did at dc is batman and superman you know and that blew my mind you know what i mean when i got a call from jim lee and he's like he says batman and superman mm -hmm. You know, my head nearly popped off. Um, but uh, the, uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, it was it was a huge thing for me uh, to you know to get tapped for action, uh, and it's been uh, a dream working on that book because I got paired with Aaron Cooter, who is an amazing artist and has become a real good friend, and uh, we're kind of mind melded on the thing. Um, we started off. Uh, with me as a writer and him as the artist, and uh, we, you know, from the beginning we were doing a very, um, it was a real great collaboration because I turned in a, a detailed page by page outline, and Eddie Berganza, our editor, said, "I want to just send this over to Aaron like this and let him, you know, do the layouts based on this." Um, I said, "Okay, let's do that," uh, and Aaron. And it worked great. I mean, that's what's known in the industry as working plot first. Uh, sometimes people say uh, working Marvel style. Because back in the day, uh, that's the way Stan Lee worked. He would, you know, write an outline and send that to the artist, and they do layouts based on that. And then later on, he'd come back and do the dialogue. Um, and I've done that a few times in my career, and it's been okay. But it only really started to sing when I when I did it with Aaron on this book. Uh, and I think it's because. Uh, we would get on the phone and talk through everything, and, and uh, so we were all on the same page. We knew exactly what was going on emotionally uh, with every moment, and, and, and he would bring stuff to the table at that stage that I would never have come up with on my own, and it's just been a beautiful process. So um, just in the last few months, we have, uh, we, we, we've upped the ante, and he's now actually co-writing the book with me. So it's, uh, it's been a great, great experience. Now that you're in D.C., or in, in general, in any comic book company, is there a character that you wanted to work on that you haven't? You know, you said you were a big Hulk fan, you got Hulk. Uh, is there a character in any of the companies that you go, I wish I could work on that guy? That would surprise people. You know, it's funny because a lot of the characters that I kind of came into comics hungry to work on, I've had the chance to work on. You know, for a long time, I had a list of uh, Marvel characters that when people would ask me this question, I'd say, Silver Surfer, Doctor Strange, and Storm. Uh, and uh, I got to write a Silver Surfer mini. I got to write the Doctor Strange season one book. And then I got to write this Storm series that just ran for 11 issues. So um, I've had some pretty good, pretty awesome opportunities to work on a lot of these characters. I mean, Superman and Batman are these iconic characters that I always wanted to jump on. And it's been a dream. So, uh, I mean, de you know, there are definitely other characters who I think would be a lot of fun uh, to to uh, to work on, it, you know, eventually. Um, I don't say them as much right now because I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> so, but, uh, but I figure, uh, you know, I hope that I can. I've, I've been writing comics now for almost 11 years. If I can stick around another 11 years, I think I'll get all my bases covered. Nice. Uh, any advice you could give to a, a writer? wanting to come into this industry. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, I wrote this whole book called Make Comics Like the Pros. I co-wrote it with Fred Ben Lenti. So my first bit of advice would be buy that book. <laughs> it's got all of our all of our, our secrets. Fred and I co-wrote the Incredible Hercules books for Marvel for about four and a half years together. Um, and uh, we basically dumped everything that we uh, that we know into this book, Make Comics Like the Pros. Uh, and we go through every single stage of the comics making process from having that first initial idea to working with collaborators to kitchen to uh to uh, uh to to um to even get into like marketing and self-publishing in the end you know 
like all of those, even like your social media strategy. You know what I mean? We talk about everything. And we try to make it as practical as possible. So that's the number one place I would go for uh, uh, get that book. Um, but the other kind of little bit of nutshell advice I always uh, I, I always toss out when people ask me this is that um, whenever we all of us when we start out we have some big epic story in mind and uh, that's awesome have that epic story in mind work on it you know we all have this like 50 issue series we want to do we have this 200 page graphic novel we want to do keep that dream keep that alive always be working on it but don't do that as your very first thing you know what I mean? It's your very first thing. Do a two-page comic. Do a four-page comic. You know, do a six-page comic. Do something really short with a beginning, middle, and end. Uh, because if, if you're a writer in particular, you're not going to get an artist who's going to write a 200-page graphic novel for you. You know what I mean? Like, it's not going to happen uh, right out the gate. You might be able to find somebody uh, who's coming up at the same time as you, and you split the rights with them, and they they, they, they block out a few weekends, and they're able to draw a four-page story. You know what I mean? And, and draw an awesome four-page story. You finish an awesome four-page story, you start to get it out in the world, you start to build a little bit of a reputation, you can do the next thing. Also, you finish something, and you learn a huge amount from actually finishing it. And then you can move on to the next thing and make the next thing better, you know? I, I did a million short films when I was coming up because I came up through film. I made like, I mean, literally a couple dozen short films. Uh, and each one of those, you know, uh, you know, by the time I was at a certain stage, you could make a short film for like two hundred dollars if you had the editing equipment and the camera. You know, I mean, to actually make a short film is not so expensive. Um, and having and doing all those short films before I did my feature was huge because I learned so much. I got a lot of mistakes out of the way. Great advice, great advice. Um, now, you've worked on a lot of collaboration projects. Do you find it harder or easier? Well, well every project I work on is a collaborate. I mean, is honestly... I, I, I meant like, like with Superman Duke. It was oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's a, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, I, yeah I've worked on, a, um, you know, in comics, if you're working in work for higher comics for, for the big two, eventually you're going to end up doing, uh, it's very likely you will end up doing uh, an event, you know, a crossover. Uh, I mean, that's one of the way comics are built and, and comics are sold. And uh, so being able to, uh, I mean, and that can be crazy, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's, it's, it's wild and it's, it's uh, the, you know, stuff can change very quickly and, and uh, you need to be able to kind of, you know, roll with it and figure out how to tell a story with a lot of other folks and, and make it work. Um, I mean, I, I did years and years of improv comedy uh, when I was in college and, and beyond, and I think actually... <laughs> I mean, not that, every, I mean, I, there's a certain amount of humor in, in everything I do, but uh, not even in terms of humor, but just in terms of being able to think on your feet and uh, make things work and figure out how to justify all kinds of, uh, of, of strange elements is uh, critical in comics. Um, I mean, I... I uh, I know that big events can drive some folks crazy, you know what I mean? And it can be frustrating, but, um, but I think they're a lot of fun. And I, I mean, I enjoy that challenge of, uh, you know, of, of trying to incorporate those different elements and make them all work and, and come up with a thematic whole uh, that makes uh, all of these different things uh, click. Um, I mean, with, uh, with the Doom storyline, we had, um, you know, Charles... Uh, myself and, uh, and and Scott Liddell were all coming into this with pre-existing storylines we've been working on in our separate Superman books, and you know we tried to take all those different storylines and make them work in this new bigger storyline that involved Doomsday. And it's a huge challenge, you know. I mean, it's there's a million different working parts, and uh, uh, you know, it's a crazy sausage we're making. <laughs> but it was a blast, you know what I mean? And and uh, I mean, one of the fun things about that is that. Um, well, two of the great things about it is that when you're working with other writers, you learn a lot. You know, uh, having that chance to be in a room with other writers is very exciting, uh, and it's fun. You know, when you when you're a writer, you spend a lot of time by yourself, just sitting and making things up, and uh, and that's awesome. But it's very uh, it can be a ton of fun to get into a different kind of situation where you're in a room with other people and. Uh, you know, creating stuff with other folks. That's uh, it's a lot of fun. So, I, I mean, I've loved doing this because I get to learn from other writers. And then there's also just that kind of thing of um, stuff will come into the mix that you never would have thought of on your own that ends up being awesome. 
you know. Uh, so, uh, so that's yeah. I mean, it is also you know, there's also that you know, teetering on the brink of disaster feeling sometimes where you're you know trying to make it all come together and uh, and but you know, I mean, we're all pros, we you know, and uh, and it, it, they tend to work out. So it's been fun. So now, you said you've been around for eleven <clears throat> years. So, sorry. So in your 11 years, um, if somebody were to come up to me and say, hey, who is this guy? What is, was as of right now, the most proud of book that you have? The book that you would say, hey, you want to read, you can only read one of my stories. This is the one I'd want you to know. It would totally depend on the reader. You know what I mean? Like, I, uh, I'm, I'm just going to cheat. Uh, because I can't pick one of my babies, you know what I mean, to put up on that pedestal. Uh, but you know, I mean, if it's a if it's a little kid, I would say the Princess Who Saved Herself, which is this children's book that uh, that um, we just came out with. It's based on the song of, uh, by Jonathan Colton it's about this kick-ass girl who uh, drives this witch down the street crazy with her guitar playing, and then they have to work it out. And the princess saves herself. It's awesome. Uh, drawn by Takeshi Miyazawa and. Uh, and um, I mean, I love it, and I love seeing kids read it. Uh, so if you're a little kid, that's that is exactly the book I want you to be reading. If you are, you know, I mean, if you're, uh, um, you know, a superhero fan, and Planet Hulk, and uh, probably Action Comics Volume Five, the first book that I did with uh, Aaron Cooter, those are the, you know, books. Right? I mean, those are the books I have on my table right now here at Eternal Con, I, uh, and uh, I'm thrilled whenever anybody buys it because um, those are both great starting points for folks, you know. Uh, uh, sometimes I'll recommend books also based on, um, you know, if somebody hasn't been reading a book for a while, I'm not necessarily gonna, gonna, uh, gonna push on them a book that's really tied to a certain, you know, storyline or like a tie in to a, to a crossover. I'm gonna, like, there's some other books that are just much better as starting points. Like, Planet Hulk is definitely one of those. That Action Comics book is one of those. Um, for folks who are interested in history, uh, the Magneto Testament book I did. Uh, with Warren Simons, editor Warren Simons, and, and uh, Carmine uh, did Gian Domenico uh, for Marvel. It's the origin story of Magneto. It's a straight historical fiction about a kid trying to keep his family alive during the Holocaust. And that's one of the, uh, I mean, that's one of the things in comics I'm the most, uh, I guess I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the most proud of doing. Uh, we really strove to be historically accurate and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and is just subject matter that meant a lot to all of us. So, uh, I'm always happy when I hear folks are using that and reading it. It's actually been used in some classrooms and stuff, which blows my mind. I feel like it, <clears throat> feel like it should be. Oh, that book was, was incredible. Now, you've worked with a lot of great artists, um, even John Rita Jr., who's going to be here. Um, who's an artist you haven't worked with that you'd like to, to work with? Oh. Yeah, well, uh, I'd love to work with Jimmy Chung. He's amazing. Stephen Piven is amazing. Uh, Amanda Connor is amazing. I mean, yeah, there are tons of artists I'd love to work with. Uh, knock on wood, I'll, I'll be able to do that someday. Hopefully. Um, so I'm going to wrap this up now because it's getting busy. Uh, so one final question. Uh -huh. Do you think Lucky Charms are magically delicious? Uh, when I was seven, yes. Now I'm actually really working hard to cut back on sugar. So... Uh, so I'm, I'm <laughs> so oatmeal with uh, raisins and bananas are magically delicious to me. I, it's, the, it's the saddest answer I could give you to that question. But that's where I'm at right now, people. Well, well thank you for your time. Uh, this is Sean B. On to the next one.